In finals uh, this week, uh, coming off of a game where we have a lot we need to improve on from our game uh, at Wilmington the other night, um, tough opponent coming in in uh, Coppin State, uh, obviously a dynamic, dynamic scorer, one of the very best in the nation, uh, but, but they're a lot more than just him, but he's obviously a great challenge for us and, uh, you know, again, in the middle of finals right now, two days of practice preparation as we move forward to it and uh, again, a lot to improve on from our last outing. How are you guys kind of balancing the on-court time versus making sure guys, you know, take care of their academics? Yeah, you know, we had to, you know, just the way it is this time of year across the country, sometimes you get extended breaks. A lot of teams, I know a couple of people, coaches I've talked to around the country had 10 day breaks right now. And it's just the way the schedule works out. So uh, we did take uh, the day after the game, we were off. The guys had to lock in on finals because when we played the game versus Wilmington, it was right on the cusp of finals starting. So our guys have been in exams the last two days. And we've just had to pick and choose our time, when we can get in, when we can practice. And, and then today and tomorrow, we'll be back on a full schedule as we lead into Sunday. Because you're a month into starting your first program. Are, has there been any surprises or things that just jumped out to you that just maybe were not on your radar going in? Uh, you know, I, I, it probably happens every day to some degree. There's something that pops up, and I think that's normal whether you're in your first year, whether you're, um, you know, a veteran or seasoned in terms of many years of being a head coach. But I think the thing that we are looking at the most, we're trying to stay on one, one avenue is – putting 40 minutes together of who we are as a basketball team. And we haven't done that yet. Um, you know, a lot of that is continuing to establish our identity, but also just being able, even when we do feel like we're playing well in games, including the other night versus Wilmington. I mean, the first 12 minutes were really, we thought we played pretty good basketball. The last five minutes, it wasn't about winning the game as we were trying to win the game, but the score, you know, the game was, you know, it was going to take something really special to come back and be in that game. But the last five minutes, we built on something. So I've often said this, that every single thing we do, whether it's a meeting, a film session, practice, individual workout, or in a game, in a particular situation, since there are a lot of firsts, like you said, in our first month, we're learning, we're teaching. Uh, we can never take a moment that is just taken for granted. And I think that's probably been, as I've been my first year, you realize that every single moment, regardless of if it's important to everybody else and it's the game or it's a, a it, every single moment is a teachable moment and, and we're trying to get better from those. Do you have time maybe to reach out to Coach Barnes or, or speak to maybe some guys that you've known along your way? To just have if you have questions about kind of how to go about that. Oh, of course, uh, all the time. I mean, as I speak with current head coaches, Coach Barnes. I spoke this morning to uh, Jerry Wainwright, uh, who to me is someone I respect, and I spoke about him prior to the Wilmington game, and I saw him at the Wilmington game, and we spoke this morning. You know, and uh, I think you're doing that consistently. And sometimes it's because there's someone specific, and sometimes it's because it's just conversationally, and you know, and stuff comes up. So absolutely, though, and I think that's a great point. Last couple of games, Luigi hasn't uh, played or come off the bench. Is that an injury concern, or is that more so he doesn't fit the defensive scheme? What exactly is? You know, I, it's definitely not an injury concern, and I would definitely never say it's not about not fitting. I think we've talked about it here before that, you know, rotation, you know, it needs to be narrowed a little bit so guys can get in in a little bit of a rhythm. And uh, you know, at this present time, just over the last couple games I think you've seen that that Ezra Osar has been playing some of his best basketball and you know and Valentino does a lot of really good things for us in practice and uh, you know so trying to get him out there a little bit and you know again I think that's an ebb and flow of every season I think early in the season we were playing 12 13 guys and I think that had to be narrowed a little bit but that by no means uh, translates in that Luigi, it will stay the same for Luigi. I think what we do in practice is what determines what happens in the game, and it's just been like that for the last couple of games. What uh, certain things um, about your team and your team's skill set have you kind of honed in on practice that you drastically want to improve moving forward? Yeah, a big thing is going to be because of the fact that we use switching a lot over defense. You know, I think there's a couple different philosophies. I think I've been in both where we, you know, we, I haven't been a part of always feeling like switching is always the best thing, but when you have a shot blocker and you have someone that can protect the rim, if you want to pressure a little bit, you can get away with not switching some because you do have that kind of second, third layer of defense. 
this team doesn't have a shot blocker. That's not something that, you know, right now we don't have. So whether it's rotations and looking to fill the paint up with charges or it's looking to switch, but with switching, which we've done and we've had success switching, it's actually helped us win a few games. With switching becomes rebounding late clock in cross matches where we might have one of our point guards on their big wing like the other night, you know, Trezarian White is their big wing. He's a wing for them. And now our point guards ended up on him late clock. And it's not that it's a fight in the paint, but Trezarian White is coming from the three point line and he's sprinting to the glass. He did an unbelievable job. I mean, 10 rebounds in one half. And obviously I think he had 14 in the game. But point being is now you're saying Javon or Caleb or Winston, it's not just about blocking out a post player, it's finding someone coming from the perimeter because the switch happened earlier in the possession. So between post defense and rebounding out of cross matches, that's where our focus really is right now, next couple of days, but really where we need to be as long as we continue with our switching defense. We're starting to see kind of those flashes from Ezra, you know, especially near the paint. Do you you feel like he can shoot the ball too and expand his game at some point, or is that something we'll see kind of down the line? Uh, yeah, it's a great point. Uh, I do think he's capable, but uh, but I think like if everybody tries to do everything, you you never can hone in on a skill set that maybe is is beneficial at the current moment to, to best suit trying to win or trying to be successful. So I think Ezra works on his shooting every day. I think Ezra can be a good shooter. I think he is a solid shooter, and there's times he shows it in practice. But I think what's really helped Ezra is he's blocked that out of his mind and he said I got to concentrate in A, B, and C to try and really be successful and I think players do that they, they kind of hone in on a certain area and they say they have to narrow their focus to become successful and then slowly but surely their roles can grow and they can expand a little bit. Do you feel like him and Brandon are gonna have to maybe play together a lot where they can really I don't know, be in sync at times because they kind of play a similar skill set, similar positions to some degree. Yeah, you know, Brandon obviously can play inside and out a little bit more, but they both can bring presence scoring the paint. We've obviously gone to that lineup the last couple games, and we think it's uh, we think it's something that can be good for us. Um, yeah, I think, you know, in terms of interior passing and playing off each other on offense and reading what the other guy's doing, I think that's – I think any time we can go – I mean, at the end of the day, I think we're 10 games in, and I don't think anybody on this team may be outside Jaden Walker from his freshman year at Iowa State, and I'm not 100% sure, but I don't think many guys have more than 10 career starts right now at the Division One level, uh, and it would be in the 10 games that we've had, and I don't even, not every guy has started every game. So point being is I think that's gonna naturally happen in practice, it's gonna happen in competition in the games, and um, you know, the first play of the game up at Wilmington, those guys were in sync, and you know, post to post pass from Brandon Ezra, and he gets a finish at the rim, which was a big play for us so you hope we'll see more plays like that. Was it good to see uh, Ben get a few shots to fall in? Like we talked about, no spin struggle. Just had to be good for him to see that, right? Yeah, 100%. And again, I, I really I tell you, if you came to our practices and you watched how the guys encourage Ben to shoot and the coaching staff, and it's just about taking the right shot. I mean, if Ben continues to take the right shots, some of those shots where his percentages have not been high because he took the wrong shot. It's not necessarily just missing shots. And he's gonna take the right shot and miss those shots too. But the point is if he learns shot selection and takes the right shots, he's not gonna have a problem with anybody here, our team, our teammates, coaches, we all believe in him, we want him to do it. And, and again, he's starting, obviously his percentages aren't high, but he's starting because of the fact the way he plays defense is rebound in his effort. And if he does that, we know it'll carry over to the offensive side. And he, you know, before the injury, he had good numbers offensively at JUCO. So is it kind of one of those things, like eventually you kind of expect that side of the game to pick up? I, I would hope so. We know Ben's a very talented offensive player. He really is. I mean, I don't know if we were ever, you know, said, hey, he's going to be the leading scorer, this or that. I mean, it could happen. But the point being is we never felt like he is a one one side of the court player, just defense. He's a guy that can score the basketball. He can do it inside a little bit. He can drive it. He can shoot the ball. And it just hasn't gone down for him. But I, I'll go back to – prior to the Hampton game, I believe it was, way back when, you know, Ben was getting ready to be in the starting lineup way back then. And he uh, rolled his ankle the day before the game. And it kept him out. And then Florida, he, he was in and out because just getting back and so so on and so forth. Then you come back and you got Old Dominion. He was a little, so Ben was playing really good basketball in practice into our third game of the season, which I believe was Hampton. And he was gonna be in the lineup and it just, you know, sports, he got banged up. And now, you know, hopefully, I think we're starting to see him kind of get his rhythm again. You mentioned earlier in the season that 
as far as Winston coming back to more minutes, it's all about him just being in game shape. I think it was the UT Arlington game. He played like 20 minutes. So yeah. He's kind of back to what he was at the beginning of the year. Can you just tell us how his process is as far as conditioning? It's really the same. I mean, Winston is really working hard every day. And it's just you're at the point in the season where you can't use the games to get in shape. And, you know, this is, that wouldn't be fair to our program. It wouldn't be fair to the other guys. So Winston plays and his minutes are based on what he's able to do physically. You know, we know Winston is a really dynamic player, but trying to pinpoint a time frame on when you're gonna get back in full game shape, when maybe your cardio's back, but how well are you moving and exploding on offense or defense? Or maybe that's back, but your timing on the other. So I think it's just, it's still an uphill battle in terms of putting it all together and it all, you know, kind of coming together at the same time. And I think there's been moments where he played more than people thought he would early in the season. And probably, like you said, maybe there's been some moments where people saw the UT Arlington game and said, well, hey, maybe this is it. He'll play 20 minutes from here on out. And I just don't think it works like that when you've taken that much time off. And I think Winston's had an incredible attitude. He works every day and eventually it will, you know, it will come together. Coppin State's got a really dynamic guard in Sam Sessoms. I believe he's averaging almost 24 points. Yeah. Based on what you've seen, what's made him such a dynamic score, and how do you plan to kind of somewhat limit him on the defensive side of the basketball? Uh, you know, I, I wish that was a great answer for the, the second half of that, but what makes the you know the easy part is he's a very he's a dynamic basketball player. I mean, he can score driving the basketball. He can play at the mid-range. He can shoot off the bounce. He can shoot the three ball really, really well. He's shooting 40%. He's a uh, redshirt senior, I mean, extremely experienced. He's been in battles from me. So it's going to be an incredible challenge for not only our guards guarding him, but our whole team. You're not going to stop uh, Sessoms with one player. There's no way. And, and that doesn't mean uh, that that's something you can't be effective or hopefully be effective with how you guard him, you know, one on one. But the simple fact is it's going to take a team effort to make sure that, you know, because scoring 24 games, one of the leading scorers in the nation, and, and he can really score every which way on the court. There, he doesn't have a weakness as an offensive player in terms of scoring the basketball. So, um, you know, it's a great challenge and, and something that, you know, our guys are going to have to accept. What's your overall team scouting report for Coppin State? Very, very fast-playing team, one of the top 20 teams in the country pace of play. I mean, they're going to push the basketball. They're going to get the ball up quick in transition. You know, they don't have a ton of long possessions, not that they, you know, couldn't or don't do it, but the first good shot they get, they got dynamic guards. You know, people talk about Sessoms a lot. You know, their combo forward in Tark is a real, you know, mismatch problem. He can score inside. He can score outside. He can drive the basketball. They're going to play a defense that looks to turn you, turn you over. I mean, they, the way that they do some of their switching techniques that they use and some of their different man zones, some of the different things they do. So they're going to force tempo. I mean, so forcing tempo with really good guards that can score the ball, that really have a versatility on defense in terms of them switching. I mean, you know, they've played NC State, they've played Georgetown, they've played Maryland. They're 11 games in, so they've experienced really good competition. They've been in two overtime games already. So, uh, you know, we, we know we have more than our work cut out for us.